All right, guys, today is very snowy outside. We're getting about 10 inches of snow here in the DC area. So I just thought, eh, I'm gonna change my tires. It's about time, so I'm stuck inside, so I might as well do it. We are gonna start with the front wheel. And the front wheel on this is a 14 millimeter. And then I have a breaker bar. And this is very tight because no one has ever change the, the tires on the, this bike and also we have on this side 19 uh, a 19 millimeter socket there go ahead and try this this side this is a just a standard breaker bar oh that's much better okay. 12 millimeter and if it's uh you can do that to break it or use an extension bar there we go now, one of the important things is not to let this caliper just hang. So you might want to get like a zip tie and put it up. Just kind of tie it up to the floor. So I just tied the brake caliper up. Now we have to remove the axle. I'll take my machine here. And there we go. There's the nut. There's a nut for that side. And then we should be able to pull out the axle from here. And it looks very dry. Um, if it's tough, just kind of pull up on the wheel, and there goes the the axle. Okay. Oh, you know what? We might have to put something underneath because the the bike might just fall. So, just so you learn something from me, put something underneath the bike so it doesn't move forward. Apparently, it's got more weight in the front than the rear, so I put a jack underneath and that should be enough for us to do the wheel the things i have is this little tool this is going to let me remove the valve in the tire and the air should just squish out out to the air. number one thing you have to do when installing tires is look for an arrow uh, which way the direction of the tire is going so on this, you're not going to be able to see it on video, but there's an arrow this way. So that means that the tire is going to be oriented this way. So it's going to rotate this way. So it's very important because when you install it, that means that the rotor has to be on this side. And then the uh, speedometer is going to be on this side. You need tire levers. These are my tire levers. They're not great. I like these with the handle. If you can afford it, you can get the really long tire uh, levers that are just kind of long for leverage. So I'm going to take my tire lever, I'm just going to do this quite a bit. The whole point of this is to kind of loosen it up. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to take another lever and I'm going to put it on here and reverse it. So I'm going to put it this way. That way I can kind of push it down while I push up. There we go. It's actually on there. It's actually it's pushing it, pushing it down. So that's what we want. We want it to push down. Here we go. That's actually off the bead already. I'm surprised. You see, it's going down now. This is uh, surprisingly easier than I thought it was going to be, and it's off the bead. Let's reverse it, flip it. Push it. Hold it with your foot if you can. Helps to have a friend help you with this. Oh, it's actually going. That's great. Wow. That's it. It came off the bead. That was really easier. I guess these uh, scooter tires are easier to get in and out. Alright. So now we have to flip the tire lever and here we go. I like to use the rotor side that way I can just put it behind and this way it's like having a helping hand. Go pinch your hands on there. So it's difficult to kind of sometimes get the lever on here. It's definitely a little bit of a workout. 
I don't enjoy doing this, by the way. This is the worst thing about owning a bike, I think. It's so messy and dirty. Okay, here we go. Now I'll take the middle one, position it here. And now I'll take the other one and just go around like this until it comes off. At this point, it should be fairly easy to get off this side. It's off of one side. So this part, we are going to have to kind of push it from here. What I'll do is I'll put it like this, like that. Okay. Let's see if I can. There we go. That was a. Uh, a little bit easier than I expected. So, tire off. Let's uh, start putting the new one in. Get it as much as possible. Let's uh, make sure that we have the arrow pointing the right way. But usually, putting on a tire is a little bit harder than removing it. This is going to take me a while to do. This side is going to be a little bit easier than the other side. There we go. Just keep rotating it. There we go. So that's that side is now in. Now this is the hard part, is getting this on the rim. Now usually there's marks where you line up the Schrader valve. Like this. Usually I like to put my foot on it and then just kind of work my way around. This is it, I put the tire on the rim. You can still kind of move it around if you you try. So, but you can't, of course, change the rotation. So, everything about it is good. Now, the the next thing I need to do is put the valve back onto the tire and stick it in here. It doesn't like settle, so you have to kind of push it down. But let's go ahead and give it a try. All right, the tire is on the bike. Now, if you remember. This is the axle, and what I have here is some grease. And I'm just going to grease the axle. You don't have to put too much, but you should definitely have some lubrification. So I'm going to slide this in. The key really is to stand right in front of the bike and line it up properly. What I was doing is I was doing it from the side, so it was hard to line up. And lift up the tire as you do it. So now I got my, my bolt. In here, we're gonna just thread it. And then we have our 19 millimeter. And then our 14 millimeter on this side. So you have to hold one while the other one is tightening. We're just gonna do that for now. Tire spins effortlessly. Now we're gonna undo this and put or brake caliper back, uh, back on there. And there we go guys, that is the front tire mounted on the SH150 and now I have to change the rear tire and I am going to switch it with one with a 130 uh, 16 rear tire from Shinko. I do have a Diablo or a Pirelli Angel but I'm going to go ahead and put this one because it's a, a little bit older and I just want to get rid of it. I changed that front tire and now it's time to 
get the rear tire on. The rear tire is much more complex. So to get to the axle, you have to do quite a few things. So that is that bolt that you have to remove. It's a rather large one, but look at this entire arm, this entire steel bracket, you have to remove that. And you also have to remove the exhaust and you also have to kind of push away this this uh, suspension so this is going to be quite a little bit of a project and of course to remove the exhaust you have to go over there remove the header this is um, one of the things I hate about scooters in general is this sort of uh, <laughs> design this one is particularly well designed because you know it's mostly open you don't have to mess around with plastic and that is good but my tire you can see it is old and has no thread in the middle and you know when you're riding in the snow that's not a good idea so we are going to be replacing this today with that tire which is a Shinko 130 80 16 so it should fit it's a little bit wider I believe what is this one this is a Dunlop D451 120 so it's one size bigger and it should fit I think it's got enough clearance so we'll check it out so these are 14 millimeters and we're gonna have to undo this this and probably another one underneath but they're probably on very tight oh yeah there's a 14 millimeter right there I mean using this bar to kind of leverage my way into removing them now I can use this get the bottom one so these two came off of here and notice the bottom one is smaller than the other two so the exhaust the header you have to come up here remove the plastic here and then you should be able to reach those two bolts here where my fingers are 10 millimeter will get those bolts out use a red those uh, bolts there might have to use an extension but there we go it's actually fairly easy to access you don't have to get underneath the bike and here you can just move these hoses aside 10 millimeter standard wrench metric of course you might have to push up on the exhaust yeah once you push up it gets loose okay there we go exhaust is that there's an O. O2 sensor here and I'm trying to see if I need to remove it I should be able to kind of kind of strap it on there you don't want to mess up the, those wires so I remove these 10 millimeters there's a cover here and you can unplug the electric wiring here and you see the way it runs it runs around the bolt this way and then there's this connector here yeah, let's see if I can pull it out it might be difficult with one hand this rubber was just so tough to get out so but now the o2 sensor is uh, out we should be able to um, just hey uh, it is heavy that is so heavy jesus this thing is probably one of the heaviest exhausts man anyway o2 sensor is out you might want to check to see if there's any carbon buildup, but uh, it looks pretty good we should be able to look around and remove this arm so you see that bolt we removed we're going to remove this that's going to release the axle we're removing this large bolt but here's the problem and you can't even put it in gear because it's a scooter on a motorcycle you put it in gear you'd be able to remove the tire but this just pins like that so we need to the rear brake what you can do is just tighten the rear brake as much as you can so you push it, Let's see if I can put something, and here we go. And we're going to re-grease all of this stuff, so there is a bolt and then there's a big washer here. Let's make sure that we keep it all together. It's not a washer, it's actually like a spacer. So let's put this aside safely. So that's the, the system here. And just kind of get it out. This one up here has got a washer. So keep that in mind. 
it's a frame mount but it's got a washer on here so uh, when we pull this out just uh, remember it goes there there's another one down here and you see like it won't move because it's just way too much it's on there quite a bit the spring or something so let's just leave that <clears throat> and go back to that bolt 14 millimeter use your breaker bar and that's that all of this just to remove a rear tire it's crazy so that is the frame bolt right there 12 millimeter you can kind of swing it out and now we should be able to just kind of pull this out one of the things I like to do is put everything back if I can that way I know where it belongs <clears throat> of course these we're gonna have to remove remember these use washers holding it there we go here it's coming out just move the suspension inside and here we go and there that is that bracket kind of look around there's bearings here on this side they do look pretty well pretty greased but I will clean this section out and re-grease it there's this this is a spacer so if you remove it just kind of put it back like this that way you know where it belongs <clears throat> and this is the axle it looks pretty well greased so whatever whatever happened this is a very well greased bike so that was it so now it's loose i believe i have to remove this as well i was kind of hoping not to so let's go to the other side and remove the it's a phillips and to be able to remove it all right i'm trying my best not to remove this plastic for some for some reason the, this is kind of like in the way and let's see if i can remove it but it's almost done so i should be able to remove it without removing the other side let's give it a try all right so i did manage to remove it my other bolt on this is um it's locked you know every bolt just seems to be locked and you have to do this kind of like sidestep to get the tire out but the tire is now out so and that's the rear brake it's the drum brake you don't see those very much i kind of wish it was a disc brake but nay i definitely picked a good day to work on the bike it's uh, a blizzard out which is not entirely um that different but you can see it is much flatter so that could be a problem but i am gonna try it anyway i've removed the air and now i'm just going to remove the tire from the rim and then i'll install the new one and there we go the tire slip, slipped off quite a bit quite well here's the rim it's very clean it's a very um light rim so now as you've seen in the first video of um, installing um the first thing we are going to do is of course clean this tire off because my old tire is quite dirty so make sure there's no debris inside just kind of if you take an air hose you can kind of clean it um i hope this is going to work because it is a bit wider than what i was expecting but uh, hopefully it will work let's look for the arrows there's the arrow right there it's pointing this way that means that it's going to be mounted this way easy to get in um, and it actually looks much thinner now that it's on the tire so it might not even require anything the stem is in now the left thing the last thing is to inflate it but you have to make sure you hear a pop to make sure that the bead sits if uh, you don't hear a pop you have to redo it air is in the tire it went on just perfectly and one of the things I'm noticing about the tire is that it's thinner so I'm hoping that I don't have to trim anything off of the fender before we put it on make sure you lubricate all of the stuff very important is that are the tires on the bike I neglected this for quite some time but now the bike is ready to ride I'm probably gonna be changing the oil soon I did have to cut a little bit of the hugger here so the the tire would not rub but I think it's been pretty successful the next thing is just take it out for a spin but unfortunately it is still snowing out there and so I'm gonna have to wait but that's how you change the front and rear tire on a Honda SH150 I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video